Welcome to AM Best Audio. According to Mark Gagan, insurance is a maze. Every week during his podcast, The Voice of Insurance, he aims to help people not get lost in that maze. I'm John Weber for I Am Best TV, and I'm speaking today to Mark Gagan. Mark, so glad you could join us. Oh, well, thanks so much for having me. Uh, so, Mark, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm, I'm, I've been a, a, a re- insurance and reinsurance journalist for about, ooh, it's coming up for 20 years, but I was a broker before that. So I, I was a, a gra- I studied Spanish at university and I drifted into the insurance industry like most people do. I, I went to the careers department after graduating of my, at my university and said, hey, where can I get a bilingual job where I can speak Spanish all day? And of course, you know, insurance, it wasn't, it wasn't that's, that was the first uh, suggestion. I'd never thought about working in insurance before, but it turned out that they employed lots of people, particularly in London, doing international insurance, obviously uh, Latin American insurance, Spanish insurance. And I got a job with a Spanish insurance broker. But I always had this other thing I wanted to do was to be a journalist or a writer. And I had a really vague idea about that. But that was actually, of course, in, it was in conflict with trying to have a bilingual job from day one. That would have been really hard to try and become a bilingual journalist uh, and you really need to do that kind of thing in your own mother tongue i mean my spanish is pretty good i've got a spanish wife and that was one of the other things that so after seven years i chased i lived in madrid i'd lived in london and i was getting married to a spanish lady so i was getting i realized i was getting i didn't have to have a bilingual job anymore because i had a bilingual life where i could speak spanish what i wanted when i got home uh and so i started and funny enough that was just at the time when Aon and Marsh, this is the late 90s when Aon and Marsh were really in that first wave of proper globalization of broking. And, you know, Pat Ryan was taking over everything left, right and center. And he took over uh, the company I work for, which was the biggest broker in Spain. And it's still the biggest broker in Spain, but it's now obviously Aon Spain rather than Gili Carvajal, as it was known at the time. And so that was my cue to, to say, right, I'm going to try and do this other thing because I was getting married, I was getting a mortgage, I was getting grown up and I was turning 30 and it seemed like a big deal at the time. So I thought I better try and be, be, be a journalist or a writer. And then, so I had five years off becoming a writer, becoming a journalist. And then I came back, I was ed- editor, this is in 2005. I was the editor of Reinsurance Magazine, which sadly is no longer with us, but a great, a great magazine. And then I joined the Insurance Insider three years later, and I was there for 11 years. Insurance Insider is quite well known. In, this is in the global wholesale specialty insurance and reinsurance world, which is where I've, I've stuck. And the podcast I started four years ago, because partly because, well, I was sort of, we'd done everything I was going to do at the Insurance Insider. And I really wanted to explore podcasting because, and the Insurance Insider is a great publication, and but really focused on news and really, really hard news, uh, of finding out exclusive news and finding out things that people don't want you to find out. This is podcasting was very, very different. And um, the Insider was a subscription based publication. Uh, so it's all paid for behind a paywall. And that wouldn't really work with um, podcasting. So I thought, you know what, I feel like a change. And I can see this podcasting thing is really taking off. Um, even for people of my age, I'm over 50, and my demographic, even my demographic was starting to understand that you have a podcast, it's in your smartphone, you just press a button and it's like listen to the radio. And they could finally get their head around this thing, this new medium. Um, although it's just an old medium, it's just radio. <laughs> it's digital radio <laughs> on demand. But um, so I, I started that off and, and I haven't really looked back. So fascinating background. You started the podcast, you say, four years ago. How yep. many episodes have you done to this point? And what sort of subject matter are you tackling? Right. It's about um, on episode 189 is my current episode, but there's a couple of other ones. There's probably about 215 or something like that actual episodes because a few of them are sponsored ones and I don't give them a, a full number. I call them a special episode. Obviously, they're, they're with service providers and things like that, which obviously helps pay my bills. Um, and where we're on nearly four, just coming up to 400,000 downloads. Um, and yeah, those people and the people I'm talking to, that's it's the wholesale specialty insurance and reinsurance world. So that's where, you know, where insurance is either big or weird or interesting or not easy to do and probably needs to cross a border, even if that border is just crossing a state line within the US, within the US market to the, into the excess and surplus lines market, for example. So it's non-standard, any kind of non-standard commercial 
insurance or reinsurance, and then going all the way up to the capital markets to ILS and, and other more sort of esoteric things. But it's basically, I suppose, the same subject matter that I was dealing with before as a journalist at the Insurance Insider, but transposed onto this new medium. Okay, you talk about that. You uh, speak to wholesale specialty experts. That's your uh, field of expertise. Tell us about some of the people that you're talking to there. I suppose. Well, I'm I'm looking at if you you know Ambest, you do your wonderful, uh, great rankings of who the top reinsurers are in the world. That cut these great things that cut you know great um, pieces of work that you do that you put out every you know every few quarters. Basically, I'm looking to for, to interview the CEOs mostly of those companies or those broking houses. When you do a ranking of the top 20 brokers in the world, I want to have spoken to most of them. Obviously, the ones that are in the global wholesale specialty and reinsurance world, rather than if they're in personal lines or life, I'm not really into. I'm not in, into them. But basically, I've spoken to nearly everybody I've wanted to speak to over four years. I haven't got anybody with the surname Greenberg yet, but I've been working on it. I had Pat Ryan, which is great. I always love to. I love to meet Pat Ryan because um, he's he still remembers fondly buying the broker that I used to work for because it, it was a good deal for him and it worked out really well. So because <laughs> obviously they're still the number one broker in Spain, so he's he, that always puts him in a good mood. So he's a, he became it was a really good podcast with him. But I've spoken to almost everybody, sort of past and present, but mostly CEO roles um, within that you know within that sphere. And and we're talking about we tend to be talking about the market and how their company is fitting in with that market, the state of the market, and then their strategy within the market, and then anything else that happens to be sort of top of the agenda. You know, obviously we'll be talking a lot about AI this year, or about casualty reserving, or other things. Think you know, and obviously we've been talking a lot more about the reinsurance market this year because it's been so much more interesting than it usually has been. You know, it's sort of you know, given given the uh, the, the the insurance a dog, a bit of a wag, the reinsurance tail. So whatever, whatever's front of mind in, in the market that I'm covering, I suppose we'll add in those, but it's generally, yeah, the state of the market and how those companies are fitting in with what's happening in the marketplace. And Mark, who do you find uh, is listening to your podcast? Well, I suppose it's, it's, it's a core audience of, you know, the core audience is a whole load of underwriters, a whole load of brokers. And of course, all the service of providers that are part of that ecosystem, all the lawyers, uh, lots of headhunters. And but also the other thing that's different about my demographic as a podcaster uh, compared to being a print journalist is there are a lot more younger people because they they're kind of dig they're digital natives. They find podcasts. And so I've got people who for example, they're about to go for a job interview at Aon or something, or, you know, I don't know, Axis. And they, you know, they Google all this stuff really quickly and they find me. They find the voice of insurance and they find that I did a podcast with Albert Benchimol two years ago, or I've just done some thump, some income with Vincent Tizio. And they go, they will, they'll just download it, listen to it on the way into work or, or in their car or while they're going out for a run or whatever, you know, and, and th that's a totally natural thing for them to do. So, I find that I've got a slightly younger demographic, and of course, particularly younger, ambitious demographic. That they're they're really smart, and they use media like ours to to educate themselves and to accelerate their understanding. Because when I was a broker, you know, no one told me anything. I was kind of I just had to learn it on the job and by doing it. There was no structure really to teaching me how to do things, other than I, it was a Lloyd's broker, so I had to do the Lloyd's exam. And that gave you a pretty, that was quite, that was a really basic understanding of what a treaty was and, you know, how, how, how Lloyd's worked, et cetera. But people, uh, younger people today are really good at structuring their own careers and kind of working it out for themselves. And they use, you know, they're not, they, they've grown up with YouTube and I'm a bit like a kind of YouTube for them to, how does this insurance industry work and where can I fit in with it? And they just go and they just go for it, which I think is fantastic. Customize your data experience. Best Link now offers an interactive company dashboard that provides company-level intelligence in a fast, user-friendly interface featuring interactive tables, charts, and Sparkline performance histories. Customize the dashboard tiles to prioritize the insurer ratings, data, and analytics that best support your workflow. AM Best. Our insight, your advantage. Are, are you getting feedback from your listeners? Are they asking questions, suggesting topics, maybe suggesting guests, uh, answering emails, answering fan mail? Absolutely. Well, sometimes yeah, the, the funny thing is that um, I'm strictly audio 
um, which is so it's it, it, it's it's slightly different. You know, I've had to put my jacket on to uh, to come on this show. I thought I, I better make a small effort to to look good. But I'm I, I'm strictly audio. But so I don't get seen as much. Um, but people hear my voice and they say, "You're that guy from the podcast, aren't you?" So, uh, and people are suggesting. Yeah, certainly, I've had um, certainly younger listeners would like some more youth focus. So I'm going to try and do something about that um, to have younger people because, of course, this, the I'm pretty much the same age. We're the sort of demographic of, you know, if we look up the faces of uh, the top 50 CEOs in that space that I'm covering. Well, you know, guess what? They look a bit like you and me, John, and they should look, you know, it, it would be nicer if they looked a bit more diverse. And certainly I've had that request and I'm going to try and do something about that. But of course, it's difficult because I really want to get the rock star CEOs. But if None of the rocks, if all the rock star CEOs are middle aged white guys, well, that's pretty tricky, isn't it? I mean, I can't just manufacture them. We're just the mirror, aren't we? We, if you don't, we're the mirror that's held up to the industry. And if they don't like what they see, they should change what the face looks like. But th there you go. Um, so, but I think I might try and get around that by doing a lot of top executives now have got reverse mentors. So I'm going to try and get a podcast with the reverse mentors of some of the rock stars, you know, so. You know, if we had, uh, I don't know, Greg Case's reverse mentor coming on the show, that would be fantastic. And have a reverse mentor of a very, very senior broker and then the reverse mentor of a very senior underwriter or underwriting CEO, and then ask them to sort of map out what the industry should be looking like in 30 years' time rather than asking 50-year-old, you know. So, so, Mark, what are some of the big questions that you're hoping to answer for your listeners during your podcast? Well, I suppose I'm trying to give them some insights into – well. Well, sometimes actually it's the small questions. It's things like, actually, what is this guy really like? Um, and it is a guy usually, so, you know, but obviously there, there, there are ladies on the show, but, you know, it's mostly CEOs, it's mostly men. Um, what's this guy like? Um, it's funny because, of course, when you're talking to someone for 35, 40 minutes, you're going to get an idea not only of obviously what they're doing and, and the things that they want to project out to the world that are in their script, but then what they can't script is their own personality and their own way of being, you know, their way of talking, their, you know, their personality. So funny enough, it's surprising. It surprised me how interesting that side of things is because especially coming from a hard news background, I'm just like bash, you know, we want to bat down, bat, bash down the door, get the news out, get the story, get the scoop, and then move on to the next kill, you know? Um, whereas this is so much softer, but at the same time, there's a load of nuance. And funny enough, people, um, because of course, you can't do a podcast in any aggressive kind of way. You can't just have a load of unprepared questions and start bashing them over the head live on air because they might, they'll might they just clam up. So you know, these are questions that they've been prepared in advance. So they know what we're going to talk about. And we've agreed what we can talk about. And also we've agreed what we can't talk about. And if we really can't, if you're a public company and whatever, you know you can't talk about certain things or forward-looking statements or whatever it is. But once we've agreed then that that area, we can go... It's consensual, and we know we can go into much, much more detail about it. And also, I know that they, they know that they can relax, that I'm not going to run off and publish without them having another listen through before we finally publish. So it's it's kind of very comfortable medium. They, they can really relax. And then it surprises me, actually, how much they do reveal about their strategy, what they really think about different things. And it's, it's a lot more, they give a lot more than I think they, than I thought they ever would as a as a hard news journalist, you know, hard news journalist. My idea is that I have to find out everything about them, and then I have to kind of go and bash them over the head with it. Um, this is very very different and much more consensual, and it's surprising. Once you are in a comfortable and controlled environment, it's surprising how much more people will reveal than you would expect they would. It really is interesting. So, so what are your future plans for the podcast, Mark? Just want to keep, I've done some, I want to keep developing the medium and trying out new things. So yeah, with content, for example, like trying to do something with, with reverse mentors or, or something that's slightly different, or just get a youth panel of up and coming young people and talk to them, uh, people who aren't rock stars and people who people don't know, I'm trying to get more people who, I suppose, use my own editorial judgment to say, hey, this person is not famous yet but I think they're doing something fantastic. So I'm exercising my judgment as an editor to say, and as a journalist who's been around for a really long time and have spoken and I've seen lots of things to get some of those, some of those in short text, some of these innovative new companies to really give them a showcase and give them a full podcast and say, I've kind of, this is your prize for 
I think you're doing something really good and really interesting. I had something with a business called Perbeck Insurance, a tiny little MGA in the UK. Uh, do it, but they're doing personal guarantee insurance for directors of companies, which for very small businesses, which as far as I'm aware, no one else in the whole world is doing. Uh, fantastic. So, and I, I met them and they were very unassuming. And I thought, well, hang on, this is partly what the podcasters should be about. That I mean, not every week, but every few weeks after having the big rock star CEO on, on the show, why shouldn't I have someone who no one's heard of, but I think what they've got to say is really interesting and I'm exercising my own editorial uh, judgment there, but why not give it a go and see and it surprises me that obviously those that was a very, that's been a very popular podcast, and I hope that's been good for them. It's because it's doing my job of helping to educate the industry and showing people that we've got this privileged position in the media that we get to talk to everybody, we get to see almost everything that there is, and we can sift through some of that stuff and say, you know what, I found this bit. I think this is really interesting, and I haven't seen this before. This is curious. There's a lot to talk about here. How does this work? And then we can kind of open that up. And when you've got in a medium like a podcast, you've got some, you've got plenty of time to go into what something really is and get to the essence of it, find out what it is and, and also what it isn't, which is also quite useful. Um, and so I really enjoyed doing that because that keeps me sane as well. It's, it keeps me interested. And the other thing I've done is do, um, obviously, most of the interviews are just a one-on-one -on -one interview format or maybe one-on-two where you've got co-CEOs or that kind of thing. But... At Monte Carlo, which is obviously a really big global reinsurance event, for example, I did a, the first time I did a documentary style. So it's I interviewed 22 people, which is crazy. It's far too many people. But I turned that into a documentary about everything you need to know about Monte Carlo. If you're buying reinsurance this year, this is what you need to know ahead of the 1st of January renewal season. This is what everyone's saying. This is what the reinsurance brokers are saying. This is what some of the buyers are saying. This is what the sellers of reinsurance are saying. And this is what some of the investors in reinsurance are saying. You know, it's kind of like everything you need to know. And I'm, in, instead of, uh, I'm asking those questions, but at the same time, I'm narrating that story and trying to make sense of it for, for people. It's, it's crazy amount. It's much more work than just doing a one on one podcast interview, but it's worth it. It's a kind of added value thing. And so I'd like to do more of those because then we could do things on more, far more in depth topics of, I don't know, things that are fairly timeless about sort of, I'd love to do a podcast about what makes a really good underwriter, for example, and ask really good underwriters. <laughs> and also, uh, more importantly, probably ask really good brokers what makes a really good underwriter. And that'll be a timeless kind of classic that people will be able to listen to in five years' time and it won't be out of date ever because it's a topic that's never going to go out of style. Um, so I could, you know, we could, I could go in depth into those kind of things. That's what I want to do. That, that, that's what's going to keep me interested. Because once I've finally ticked all the Greenbergs off my list and everybody, I'll think, well, have I, you know, it'll be like Alexander the Great, I've finally conquered the whole known world. Now, what do I do now? You know, and, and although, of course, once you've interviewed 189 people, um, it's time to interview them again, because it's through two or three years has passed. And then you have to interview them again because everything's changed or they've been taken over. They've moved to a new job. Um, the market's turned, you know. So there's always something new to talk about with everybody because um, time passes and the market is so fluid and dynamic, which is great. We'll never run out of things to talk about. Well, Mark, great job. Best of luck with your future plans. And thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us today. Oh, thank you. And thank you really. Yeah, I really appreciate coming on the show. And, you know, I've, I've, spent many many years interacting with am best tv at different events um and it's sort of doing little bits to camera sometimes over the years and so it's lovely to get back in touch with you that's mark gagan host of the voice of insurance podcast and i'm john weber for am best tv looking to get the attention of the insurance industry we have the platforms to do just that. Whether it be AM Best TV, AM Best Audio, Best Review Magazine, or Best Day. Find out more by contacting our Advertising Services Business Development Team at 908-882-1706.